I have a Vizio power supply for an E550i-B2. Customer sent it in saying that there was uh, power but no backlight. And one thing I did notice is this connector is a little bit loose. So let's take a look at it under the microscope. Okay, as we can see, there's quite a bit going on here. Uh, first thing, obviously there's what looks to be maybe some burn marks or I don't know exactly what, maybe flux but we're seeing that there's some crack joints. So when I'm pushing the pins, we can see movement. Uh, the pins are not even soldered in and it looks like someone did try to fix it. Um, I see some solder blobs sitting on top of the pins, but not actually making proper contact with the board itself. Uh, and so that's why the connector is loose. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is probably just completely remove that connector, clean everything up and then start from scratch. So let's go ahead and do that. So the easiest way to remove the connector is just flood every pin with solder, get everything nice and hot at the same time, and then we'll just push it through. Okay, and I'm gonna use my desolder pump to get rid of some of the excess solder. And we're gonna clean up the rest with just some desolder wick. So our connector, oops. so our connector is now loose. There we go. And our board is free and clear. Let's go ahead and clean up the flux. I'm just using 99.99% alcohol and a Q-tip here. Nothing fancy. And next I'm going to use this little Dremel for electronics to expose some of the copper. And to finish it off, I'm gonna use a fiberglass pen. And that should do it. All right, so our circuit board is prepped and ready to go. Now let's go ahead and do the connector. So this connector has a couple bent pins. Uh, taking a look over here, this one's bent and it has some of the old burnt flux and solder. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that off. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna put flux on all of the pins and clean it up with the iron. And we're gonna need to be quick on this. We can't linger too long on the pins because they're held in with plastic. So if we hang out too long on them, we're gonna actually melt the plastic that is holding in the pins. And I'm gonna add a little bit of solder to the mix.
And now let's do the same to the pins on the other side. And now a little cleanup with alcohol. Okay, that looks better. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and put that into the board. So I'm holding the clip with my index finger on the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and solder just a couple of the pins on the top to hold in the connector and lock it in. All right, now that I have two of them, I can go ahead and release and do the other pins with a little bit more freedom. And since every, as you can tell, every single one of these pins is connected by the same pad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bridge every single one of them on the same side. Uh, of course, I can't bridge from this side over to this side. That would cause a problem. But all the ones that are on the same side will get bridged and a little extra solder. Do the same thing on the other side now. One of the things I'm just really paying attention to is I'm making sure that I have good flow on the solder between the pins and the solder as well as the pad so that the bond between the solder, the pad, and the pins are strong and won't crack again in the future. So I'm gonna add a little bit more flux and just touch up a couple of these that I think I might have not had enough contact with the iron. And we'll bring, a, oh, we'll bring a little solder over from that side. Okay, I think I need to add actually a little bit of extra. Okay, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Perfect. Okay, I think we're all done soldering, so I'll just do a quick little cleanup. And then the last thing we'll do is just to confirm ensure that both sides are not shorted to one another. So we'll go ahead and use the multimeter and we'll use the beep mode. So when my leads is a short, they beep. So we'll do one lead on one side and the other lead on the other. Oop. And no beep. There was a quick beep because I slipped, but that's it. No beep otherwise, so that means that we're good. There's no short. So we're all set, and that's how we fix the power supply boards for the E550i-B2 TVs. If you have other problems with your power supply board or if this did not resolve your issue, let us know in the comments below, and we might be able to help you troubleshoot a little further. Otherwise, if you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.